Good morning. Welcome to Our Lady of Lords. Before we begin, if you could make sure your phones are silent or muted. And we welcome all the worshipers watching via the live stream. Great for your praying with us as well today. And realizing that if you're watching on the live stream, we can't, you can't make a physical communion, but you can make a spiritual communion and we'll project the prayer for that at the time of communion for you. We have song sheets, so we'll protect the words of the songs right on the wall so you can sing with us on this 13th Sunday in Ordinary Time. I invite you to stand and prepare your hearts and minds to receive the Lord in his word and sacrament. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. St. Paul reminds us that Christ died, that we might have freedom for embracing God's will, freedom for loving and serving selflessly. Our culture offers us an imitation or a false version of freedom, freedom from restrictions, freedom from limitations, which really only leads to slavery. And so we pray that we can embrace the grace that gives us the freedom to love, to serve, as Christ did. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord have, mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ have, mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
let us pray. O God, who through the grace of adoption chose to us to be children of light, grant we pray that we may not be wrapped in the darkness of error, but always be seen to stand in the bright light of truth. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the first book of Kings. The Lord said to Elijah, You shall anoint Elisha, son of Shaphat of Abel-Meholah, as prophet to succeed you. Elijah set out and came upon Elisha, son of Shaphat, as he was plowing with twelve yoke of oxen. He was following the twelfth. Elijah went over to him and threw his cloak over him. Elisha left the oxen, ran after Elijah, and said, Please let me kiss my father and mother goodbye, and I will follow you. Elijah answered, Go back. Have I done anything to you? Elisha left him, and taking the yoke of oxen, slaughtered them. He used the plowing equipment for fuel to boil their flesh, and gave it to his people to eat. Then Elisha left and followed Elijah as his attendant. The word of the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Galatians. Brothers and sisters, for freedom, 
Christ set us free. So stand firm and do not submit again to the yoke of slavery. For you were called for freedom, brothers and sisters, but do not use this freedom as an opportunity for the flesh. Rather, serve one another through love. For the whole law is fulfilled in one statement, namely, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. But if you go biting and devouring one another, beware that you are not consumed by one another. I say then, live by the Spirit, and you will certainly not gratify the desire of the flesh. For the flesh has desires against the Spirit. These are opposed to each other, so that you may not do what you want. But if you are guided by the Spirit, you are not under the law. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. When the days for Jesus being taken up were fulfilled, he resolutely determined to journey to Jerusalem and he sent messengers ahead of him. On the way, they entered a Samaritan village to prepare for his reception there, but they would not welcome him because the destination of his journey was Jerusalem. When the disciples James and John saw this, they asked, Lord, do you want us to call down fire from heaven to consume them? Jesus turned and rebuked them, and they continued, they journeyed to another village. As they were proceeding on their journey, someone said to him, I will follow you wherever you go. Jesus answered him, Foxes have dens and birds of the sky have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to rest his head. And to another he said, follow me. But he replied, Lord, let me go first and bury my father. But he answered him, let the dead bury their dead. But you go and proclaim the kingdom of God. And another said, I will follow you, Lord. But first, let me say farewell to my family at home. To him, Jesus said, no one who sets a hand to the plow and looks to what's left behind is fit for the kingdom of God. The Gospel of the Lord. There are no coincidences in God's world. Friday was the feast of the most sacred heart of Jesus. It was also the day that Roe v. Wade was overturned. And the way the message is that Christ is showing mercy to our country. So often in the scriptures, particularly the history of Israel, whenever there was 
disobedience to the covenant, or especially whenever there was the shedding of innocent blood, God threatened to send his wrath upon the nation. But so often there was someone who interceded, stepped into the breach, like Abraham did in Sodom and Gomorrah, or Moses did repeatedly with, with his people, or Queen Esther did, or the great Judith did for her people. And God relents and instead sends his mercy. And I believe that the reason that those who interceded were really first and foremost Catholics sitting in the pews of our churches in our country, way back all the way to the 70s. They are the ones, you are the ones who started what would become the pro-life movement. It wasn't the priests or the deacons and it really wasn't the bishops at all, but rather everyday Catholics who found a way to offer women another choice and to give them some hope and to accompany them along a difficult journey at times. And now the work takes on a different flavor or different front, but the message will always be the same that through our love and compassion, we can offer to those who struggle or in difficult positions a, a different choice, a way to choose life, affirm life, and to walk with them as they journey their own paths. So today we return back to ordinary time since before Lent, which was the end of February, and there are 52 Sundays in the year, and this, these Sundays where we wear the green vestments are really just highlighting what I would call basic Christianity. And it all begins with Jesus' command to follow me, follow me. It doesn't say believe in me, though we'll say that later, follow me. And so the question we have to start asking ourselves as we hear these readings for the next Sundays all the way through until November, are we followers of Jesus? And what does that look like? Both Jesus and Paul today lay down certain principles about what that looks like. And St. Paul tells us, you were called for freedom, called for freedom. One of the wonderful things I got to do as a pastor of my last parish is watch uh, several young women enter the convent and eventually make their perpetual profession, taking vows of poverty, chastity, and obedience. And those vows might not seem like the way to freedom, but it's exactly what St. Paul means. And I admit it goes against the grain of our modern notions of freedom, which usually means freedom from, freedom from external constraints. Nobody tells me what to do sort of attitude. And this is so we can be free for self-expression. Modern man says, I am free in the measure that I have escaped from all those hang-ups, fears, traditions, people, things, rules, institutions, gender roles that used to shackle me so that I can finally do what I want, which is exactly the opposite of what St. Paul says. We do not do what we want. We do not give license to the flesh. Yet we see the modern notion of freedom displayed in a million different ways in our culture celebrating an idea of freedom that lets us be who we want to be without external dictates. Truth is, most of us are probably infected with this view of freedom. It's hard not to be when you're marinating in this culture. But the biblical understanding of freedom is very different than our contemporary notions. Biblical freedom means freedom from attachment, so as to find freedom for doing the will of God. So that's why vowing poverty, chastity, and obedience is so essential, such an important witness in our world, to show that detaching yourself from your will and freely giving up parts of your desires free you up for service to the will of God. You know, the Bible never tells us, gives us stories of self-expression or self-discovery. It never tells stories of people who wiggled free of moral demands or norms so that they could do what they want. The only way to find yourself in the Bible is to embrace the will of God. That's the spiritual principles that both Paul and Jesus are laying down in our gospel. That's the biblical path to freedom, which means you have to get rid of those things, those material pursuits and 
surrender your will, what you want, so as to be able to embrace what God wants. So first, today the scriptures give us the example of Elisha to ponder as an example of what it means to be free. In Elisha's day, having one farm animal to help you do the plowing was considered well off. But we hear Elisha has 12. In today's economy, that would be like having a garage filled of Maseratis or Mercedes Benzes. What we're being told is Elisha had a lot to lose. And so Elijah comes, throws his mantle over Elisha, which, is, which was a way of claiming someone. But notice Elijah doesn't ask Elisha's permission, doesn't talk it up with him, doesn't ask if he was up to doing the prophet thing. He just claims him because God told him to do so. That, of course, that in itself violates our modern notion of freedom. But it was precisely by being claimed by Elijah that Elisha was brought to greater freedom to do God's will. Elijah was helping Elisha understand where he would find a true freedom by moving him a step closer to doing the will of God. Next we see Elisha slaughter the 12 oxen. In other words, he's giving everything away. He even burns the plow so he could cook the meat and feed the people. And then Elisha runs to Elijah. And once you realize God, what God wants of you, you proceed in haste, just as Mary did with Elizabeth. Run in haste to embrace God's will. Elisha takes every aspect of his life and he literally gives it away. Why? Because these things are not a means to freedom, wealth, power, pleasure, honor. They really are blocks to freedom since they often keep us from discovering who we really are. And then the gospel, Jesus says to the young man, are you willing to forgo comfort, security, and home in order to follow me? Are you truly free? Or are those attachments blocking you from following me? Are you free enough to do God's will? And he says, well, well yes, but, but first let me go bury my father. For the first century Jew, there was no greater obligation than to care for your family. But Jesus is saying, even this can't get in between you and me. Is family good? Yes. But it, if it's, it is an attachment, if it prevents you from doing what Jesus wants you to do. When push comes to shove, you have to be free enough, even from your family at times, to do God's will. In the ancient world, when a country sent ships out to invade another country, once the soldiers landed and the battle began, the captain would often order the ships to be burned. There was no turning back. There was no retreat. Really, what the scriptures are asking us today, have you burned your ships? Or do you still have a mental reservation, a yes, but, when it comes to following Jesus? If you surrender to Christ, if you are willing to do what it takes, then the biblical promise to you is freedom, real freedom, not the imitation version that's pawned in our culture. But as Jesus points out, you will also find conflict, conflict sometimes with your family, certainly conflict with the world and sometimes even with the church. I think of St. Catherine Drexel, another great Philadelphian like myself, however, a very wealthy one at that, she gave her fortune away to others, especially to black and Native Americans in our country. And when she established that as her mission, she hit walls and walls of prejudice, both in and out of the church. But she never looked back. She never said, maybe I should tone it down, be a little more diplomatic, more inclusive. No, she just did what she knew to be God's will for her. The freedom St. Paul talks about and the freedom that following Jesus brings us is, in the end, the freedom to love. Love your neighbor as yourself. So, what's keeping you from love? Whatever it is, it's an attachment that can morph into an addiction. But whatever frees you for love, that is your vocation. And so, ask yourself, have I found freedom in Christ? And if not, what must you still leave behind?
There is a battle for your soul, so take it seriously. Please stand as together we profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. His kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Trusting in his generous compassion, we turn to the Father and voice our petitions. For Pope Francis, Bishop Olmsted, Father John, Father Bill, and all priests and deacons, that their preaching and teaching will strengthen the bond of unity between the faithful. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Bishop John Dolan, that the Holy Spirit may prepare him to take up his new duties as a fifth bishop of Phoenix in August. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the life of every human person, from conception to natural death, will be enshrined and protected in our laws. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the blessings in all families, that the love of God may unite and strengthen them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the grace is sweet, to live free of pride, detraction, and resentment, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the ill of our parish, especially Dave and Mary Morris, that they may be healed, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the recently deceased of our parish, especially Joanne Reamer, we pray to the Lord. Loving Father, we praise you with all our hearts, for you have rescued us. Preserve us, protect us, change our mourning into dancing through Christ our Lord. Amen. Jesus, I hear and my 
Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O God, who graciously accomplished the effects of your mysteries, grant, we pray, that the deeds by which we serve you may be worthy of these sacred gifts through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Holy Father, Lord of heaven and earth, through Christ our Lord. For by your word you created the world, and you govern all things in harmony. You gave us the same word made flesh as mediator, and he has spoken your words to us, and called us to follow him. He is the way that leads us to you, the truth that sets us free, the life that fills us with gladness. Through your Son, you gather men and women whom you made for the glory of your name into one family, redeemed by the blood of his cross and signed with the seal of the Spirit. Therefore, now and for ages unending with all the angels, we proclaim your glory as in joyful celebration we acclaim. You are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race and who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst when we are gathered by his love and when, as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, 
He took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church, in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us and grant that by the power of the spirit of your love we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. By our partaking of this mystery, Almighty Father, give us life through your spirit. Grant that we may be conformed to the image of your Son and confirm us in the bond of communion. Together with Francis, our Pope, and Thomas, our Bishop, with all other bishops, with priests and deacons, and with your entire people. Grant that all the faithful of the Church, looking into the signs of the times by the light of faith, may constantly devote themselves to the service of the Gospel. Keep us attentive to the needs of all, so that sharing their grief and pain, their joy and hope, we may faithfully bring them the good news of salvation and go forward with them along the way of your kingdom. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us when our earthly pilgrimage is done that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the apostles and martyrs and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For thy kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. 
Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only...
Let us pray. May this divine sacrifice we have offered and received fill us with life, O Lord, we pray, so that bound to you in lasting charity, we may bear fruit that lasts forever. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please visit our website or take home a bulletin for upcoming events here at the parish. After Mass, join us over in Madonna Hall at Bernadette's Brew Coffee. Uh, for coffee, drinks, and donuts, and some fellowship. And since it's hot, you may want to try one of our iced blended drinks, like the Java chip is really, really good. How to cool you off today. Also, uh, Tuesday morning confessions will be uh, canceled during July and August, but we'll still have Saturday confessions, 9.30 to 10.30, and we'll resume the Tuesday confessions in September. This Saturday is the Feast of Our Lady of Mount Carmel. Those who wish to be enrolled in the Brown Scapular uh, can come to Mass at 8.30 uh, this Saturday. Also, see our bulletin for how you can get involved with pastoral care this summer and some good service. Please join me now in the prayer to St. Michael the Archangel. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Thy gates bringing thanksgiving.